world of wings, worms, and wonder. Kelly Johnson here, your creative nature journaling connection guide. In this video in the tools series, we're talking about brushes. So when you're using watercolor in your nature journal, obviously the right brushes are going to be important to prevent frustration and to be able to express the nature you're seeing on your page the way you want to express it. So if you cut corners on any of the supplies on this video, do not cut corners on the brushes. If it means that you need to buy cheaper paint or cheaper paper or cheaper pencils, do that and save the extra for good brushes. I cannot stress this more than anything else. Brushes are like your gold. Um, they are really what can make or break a painting um, or an illustration or an experience too. Very often time, even with children, people will give children these horrible brushes and the kids will just make messes or they'll get older children um, nine to twelve year olds will get very frustrated and it's and it's not that they can't do it It's that they weren't given the supplies to succeed and that's one reason I made these videos is because I want to help you succeed set you up for success and um, Show you which supplies will do that. Okay, so brushes are a little bit complicated in a way um, There are a lot of choices. So first we're going to talk about types of brushes Okay you have round brushes, which are just like what they say. They're round tubes of brush. Then you have flat brushes, which are just like what they look. They are flat. This is the handle, this is the ferrule, and these are the bristles. In a flat brush, the ferrule is smashed to make the bristles go flat. Then you have bright which is like a flat brush, but shorter bristles. So you can see these are, this one is a little bit bigger, but they're shorter, stumpier. Then you have filbert, and this is like a flat brush, but it's rounded at the top. Um, and this is great for making, um, you know, petals or things that are wide but don't have hard edges. Then you have an angle brush. This is your classic house painting brush, but a nice house painting brush is also just a really nice art brush. So a flat brush with an angled tip. Then you have a fan brush. Always a shout out to Bob Ross when you use a fan brush and make a tree, um, which looks like a fan. Then you have liner brushes, which are very thin, detailed brushes. And this one, you know, it's the bristles are about that long. But this is a liner, the bristles are about this long. And they come in all varying lengths in between. So these are what you'll do outlines with, good for lettering, um, and anything that needs a real precise, thin line. And finally, you have a mop brush. This is an example, and it does just that. It mops paint onto the paper. If you have a large piece of paper and you need to put a lot of water on to do, say, a sky blend or background blend, ocean blend, a mop brush is great for that. Okay, that's a lot of choices. You do not need to get all these brushes. Most of the time, I only use round, flat, um, and liner. The others are extra. You don't have to think about them. So, um, but before we get into what you might need, let's talk about sizes. So each of these styles of brush comes in a smorgasbord of choices. First, sizes. Um, obviously, it's, it's common sense. A larger number, this is a 10 round, thicker than a 3 round. Um, so I generally use a 10, a 3 or a 4, and a 6. Um, so get yourself maybe three rounds spaced out in size. And you see, this is another, well, we'll get into the length in a minute. Flats. These are my favorite flats. These Windsor Newton Cotman brushes are my all-time favorites with the clear handle. Um, 
but you know these other there's plenty of other brands this is even a store brand brush but I know this art supply store carries very high quality brushes so um, this is a size 2 a 4 a 10 a 6 and this one is a three-quarter inch this is a different brand it goes by inches instead of the number scale and a lot of the brands numbers don't always coordinate sometimes they do sometimes they don't so just check that if you find oh I love a six and you go and you buy a different brand it might be a different size so these are all flats these are great for making wide flat lines straight lines um, thin squares uh, anything like that um, this is my favorite uh, for in my nature journal doing washes with this number 10 flat this um, bright is like a stumpy flat so it's going to hold less paint so when would you want to use this when you're doing short strokes filberts rounded on the top like a flat but round um, these are two different filberts a uh, four and a six and these are great for something that is you know doesn't need hard edges but you need to cover a width of, of with paint so flower petals you can use these for I don't use these too much but um, I find I can get what I want with a round and a flat but um, I do use these more when I'm doing oil painting or acrylic angled brush you know exactly that good for getting into corners fan brush I never use these honestly but they can be fun if you want to make little feathery clouds or Bob Ross Christmas trees mop brush we'll skip to never use it but again I have it so I have used it in the past but again I'm, I'm not so often these days doing giant big washes but if I was I would choose this brush and a liner brush okay the length of the bristles on these liners I often get a zero for my liner um, I do my outlines of my illustrations with this brush um, or a zero with a fairly short bristle but um, if I want to do writing I really like this brush this brushes bristle is a almost double in length what does that mean that means it holds more paint so if you're writing in well in this one writing in cursive you can go further with one dip of paint or of India ink and this brush the really long one this is about four times as long as my normal outlining brush and this brush um, is for like if you were doing really long outlines or really long borders or anything that you would need to hold a lot of paint so you think it's gonna suck paint all the way up um, I don't use this brush very often at all mostly just these two and then you may have noticed I took off this little plastic sleeve um, these protect I like to buy the brushes at the art supply store because not everyone handles brushes with care when they're looking at them um, and these ensure that the bristles have not been mangled or um, they should ensure or you don't have any bristles sticking off to the side or anything like that so always keep your little plastic sleeves and they're great for storage around the house if anything was to ever fall on your brushes or your brush container if you have them in a cup list to tip over these will protect your investment think of it as that insurance policy okay now you may have noticed why is this brush so long and this one short well that is the longer the brush it gives you more control and weight so if you're doing something very large or something where it requires precision for a long amount of time a longer brush can counterbalance the weight um, but it's you know it's kind of personal preference whichever one you like I'm often working small these days so I don't use long brushes as much as I did when I was doing big canvases or painting on wood um, so you can try out some long brushes or some short brushes but if you're working small short brushes are usually fine if you want to work bigger maybe get a couple long brushes now bristles this is very important um, you may see let's see 
we'll use a selection here of two filberts and then this uh, number 10 round. You can see the bristles are different colors. This is a full synthetic um, and that means the bristles are all man-made. Um, and generally, unless I'm getting brushes as a gift, which doesn't really happen anymore, or I'm getting brushes for free, hand-me-downs, I always buy synthetics. Um, and this is also a synthetic, but it's a very stiff. This is not, this brush is not for watercolors. This is very soft and silky bristles. That is for watercolors. Could also be used for acrylic. But um, the stiff, formerly called hog's hair, which you can get ones that are real hog's hair. Um, those are not for watercolors. Ignore them. They are for oil and acrylic. Um, you can also get sable, which comes from sables, which are little animals, like minks, I think, something like that. Um, but I always get the synthetic brushes because now these days the synthetics are just as good and high quality performing as the animal hair ones. and being vegan, I don't really try to kill animals for my art. And then also, um, they're less expensive as, as well, which is always good because then you can get maybe a nicer brand synthetic. So feel the brush and make sure it feels nice and silky smooth, and that's the brush that you're going to want to get. That's the type of bristle you're going to want to get for um, your watercolor paint. I think that is it. I know that is a lot of information. So for recap, you want soft bristles. You have to make your ethical choice between synthetic or real animal hair, but soft bristles. You're going to want to get a couple of rounds, a couple of flats, maybe a liner if you want to do any lettering or outlining, um, size zero probably probably want to get a 2, a 4, a 6, and a 10 round, a 2, 4, 6, and 10 flat. If you can't um, spring for that many right now, you could get a 4, 6, and a 10, or a 4, and an 8. Um, you know, see what fits your budget, see what fits, but just sort of space it out. Look at them, um, see what fits the size you're going to want to work. Um, and uh, that should that should get you started. So a couple of rounds, a couple of flats, synthetic bristles, uh, and <laughs> be brave when you're looking at the wall of brushes. Don't be afraid to ask the people at the art supply store for prices because it's often very not clear and you get to the register and you're like, oh, I just spent $80 on brushes, oh my gosh. Um, and so don't be afraid to ask or ask their opinion. You know, that's kind of a hit or miss, whether you might get a long diatribe of personal opinions or, but sometimes it's very useful. So, so, you know, don't be afraid. Spring for good quality brushes and follow the channel and be sure to stay tuned because I'm going to be doing an upcoming video on brush care because keeping your brushes nice, they can last you a really, really long time. Some of these brushes I've had since college, the ones um, that I really, really, really take care of. Some of them I've been using for 10 years and you know, why buy something twice if you don't have to? It's good for the earth, it's good for your wallet and it'll make you feel good. So anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you're inspired and empowered to buy wonderful brushes, to paint you through your creative journaling journey, and I'll see you back for the next and final video on pencils and pens. Bye, thanks for watching. Your words are growing in